So I did that after the Olympia in 2018. I actually went and did CrossFit for like four months. I was oh, like, wow. if I have to curl a bar again, I'm going to scream. And it was just like touching the steel. It was like, ah, it burns. And I'm still too competitive to not do anything like i'm just gonna join crossfit and i'm gonna come in and i'm gonna do what they tell me to do and that lasted for four months and you're like that lasted for four months and i was like <laughs> if i do an overhead snatch one more time i swear Melissa coppolino earned her ifbb pro card in women's physique back in 2017 and then made a pretty immediate splash actually winning the vancouver pro in 2018 a couple more shows then the pandemic hit a little bit of time off and now she's kind of climbing back into that competitive groove once again and uh, managed to secure a fifth place finish in Tupelo just a couple weeks back. So she took the time to sit down with me and chat about her history, her future, judging standards in women's physique and bodybuilding in general, and a whole lot more. Check it out. All right, Alyssa Coppolino, welcome to The Drop Set. How are you doing? I'm excellent. Thanks so much for having me, Darren. This is pretty cool. Absolutely. I know, right? It's uh, this, For listeners out there, this is my first time using some new software for interviews. This is not Zoom, because Zoom is, I believe the technical term is ghetto, right? Yeah. Is, is that, that what the kids the, say these days? Is that days? what the kids say? Yeah, I'm not I think with so. the, the Riz or the Cap and, and whatever else. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's, it sounds like you are. You're showing me. Up <laughs> I don't know how to use them properly, if there is a proper way to use them. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so uh, how are you feeling? You are, hold on, let me do some math here. This is dangerous. Eight days post-show, is that right? Yeah, nine? something. Uh, it would have been a week Friday, eight, nine, ten. Yeah, it was, it was yeah, a fr ten. It was a it was Friday, Friday show, right? Yeah. 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 So we're yeah. just just past the week after a show. Yeah. Okay. How are you feeling? I'm feeling good. I definitely yeah. took advantage of the fact that I wasn't doing any more shows, so my face came back real quick. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? Usually I'm a little bit more tempered, and I it, it was a long time of dieting, and I said, you know what? We're going for it. So I ate everything. So I ate like a like an asshole for a few days, but I'm feeling better now, less waterlogged. So I'm feeling good. Yeah. Is that kind of the MO for you? You can eat like an asshole for a few days and then you rate it in pretty quickly? I give myself, I give my, because I traveled and, and it was like almost like a, I had a full day in Tupelo by myself. So I did a lot of walking around and I went and post visited show. like post show. Correct. Um, so the day after the show, I was by myself. So I was like, oh, you know, I'll go visit Elvis Presley's birthplace and like be a tourist for, for a minute. So I did that and I, I cruised around, went to the gym, visited a new gym and stuff like that. And so I, I ate modestly and just kind of like picked at stuff. I just want, you know, I want a little bit of everything at that point after you want, a show. You want the post show sampler. I want the sampler pack. Yeah, I'll have one of everything yeah. and bite one of everything, and that's it. And then my travel trip, my travel home is never easy. I have the worst luck, and we can talk about Tampa. Oh, that was fun. <laughs> but anyway, Air Canada, for the record, is the worst possible airline. So it took me about 27 hours, I think, of travel day from start to finish to get home. And so that I packed, like, all my food, so I didn't really have I had maybe, like a cookie in the airport with my coffee oh. and that was it but then when i got That's home weak. monday it was weak but i knew yeah. coming home monday that my boyfriend and i would open the floodgates so <laughs> that's what we did <laughs> that's what we did for about a day and a half so yeah I well my so system now Th this podcast, it's, it's definitely got an international audience, but it's got an American bias. And so yeah. I just have to take exception when you say Air Canada is the worst. I'm like, you're encroaching on American territory there because we, I, I think I we have a that. monopoly on the worst airlines. You know, though, I stand strongly with my statement. Two feet in right now with that one. They are the <laughs> worst. I think they were rated like one of the top, at least the top three for losing luggage. I haven't had that happen to me only because I refuse to check bags with them. So I will pack super oh, really? light and I will, yeah, you'll roll everything real tight and shove it into. That's kind of a pain in the ass if you're packing for a show to pack light. It's not easy. It's not easy. You got to be real smart. So, um, yeah. but yeah, they, I honestly think they take to, you know, the Seinfeld episodes, it's like, you can take the reservation, oh, yeah. but they can't keep the reservation. <laughs> you can't hold the reservation. Yeah, exactly. It. So yeah, you can. So that's it. So they take all those seats, and then they don't have enough planes or pilots or ATC traffic controllers or anything to actually fulfill all these flights. And so they continually yeah. delay, cancel, delay, cancel. So 
On my way home from Tampa, I was canceled and delayed 60 hours. So I Holy was supposed shit. to get home on a Saturday night, and I got home on a Monday night. That's two and a half days. Mm-hmm. So, and, and oh, my plus, God. Plus Lyft and Uber rides there and back from the extra hotel rooms I had to book. <laughs> yeah. I'm fighting that one, so don't you worry. Yeah. Keep, you, keep you posted. The saga Please that do. is Air Canada. Yeah. Please so and this do. one was probably like four or five delays coming home from Tupelo. I was at least in Canada wow. when they were delaying them. I was stuck in Newark on the way home. From, I just like, I just, just get me into my country. I just want to get into just, my country. Exactly. <laughs> well, you know, the, the worst I ever had was one time, you know, I'm in Knoxville in Tennessee. Yeah. And one time I got stuck overnight in Atlanta. And I'm like, it's a fucking three hour drive home. Well, and, but I was just too tired to do it. I, like, I can't and, stay awake for three hours. It's so it, lame. Though. So I had to and stay I, overnight and for a 20 minute yeah. flight. Right. Right, that's even more infuriating. Yeah, it's the same thing. My <laughs> flights were probably only an hour and 20 minutes each, like two to three flights. Yeah. But I'm like six hours delayed in any one of the airports that I was in. Is, is I mean, how remote are you? Are you getting to home on like a prop plane? I mean, have to... <laughs> Sometimes it feels like it. It is a regional airport, so it is quite small. But I live in yeah. the, the east coast of Canada, not as far as Halifax, but in New Brunswick. So okay. kind of like yeah, up you're... above Maine. Because you're an hour ahead of me in Eastern time here, which I yeah. thought was weird, and I'm sure you're used to that. Yeah, like, and we're in a whole other... We're actually in a... I'm t actually... Yeah, so, like, if you're Eastern? Yeah. Yeah, so we're ba actually... Barely, yeah, but yeah. Yeah, and I'm Atlantic, which is, like, a whole extra time zone, and then I'm pretty sure Newfoundland and Labrador yeah. have another time zone. Man, that's just crazy. We're a vast country, man. I mean, you are. If you look at it on a map, it's scary. It's you know, the, scary. The, the most hilarious bad airport experience I ever had was once in Dallas. So, of course, it was American Airlines. Yep. And we spent, like, I think we were probably, like, 30 minutes sitting there, like, 20 feet from the jet bridge, like, just waiting to pull up. Because, yeah. And the pilot's like, so, we're waiting on a, uh, on a field marshal to come out and uh, wave us in with the flashlight. And, uh, well, we have the field marshal, but he can't find flashlights like he's updating us. And after, after 30 minutes, he actually comes on the speaker over the plane and he says, multi-billion dollar company, you can't find two flashlights. <laughs> he was pissed. Like, yeah. that's a pilot who had had enough, I think. Enough and was enough. was ready to hit the bar in the airport. Uh, frick, absolutely. It's so stupid. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, so so grateful to be you home. did... You did Tupelo, and it was two weeks before that was Tampa, is, is my schedule yeah, right? Yeah, roughly. Yep, yep. Okay, all right. Yep. So just long enough for you to have to come from Canada down to Tampa, not short enough of a break for you to stay down here. Like, you go back home. Yeah. And then, yeah. That's exactly it. And especially with my delay, I lost an extra two days, right? So I really only had Tuesday, Tuesday to Tuesday before I flew out. Yeah, so how does that work then when you're in prep and you're stuck in airports and you're like, you know, you just finished a show, but also like you're 11 days out from your next yeah, show? Yeah, yeah. Like that's a, a little bit of a was, panic situation. It was a bit of a panic. I mean, I pre eat pretty similarly all the time anyway, so it's really just I'm a matter to hear of, that. right, the last eight <laughs> years of my life. Um, <laughs> so it's... Uh, I spent a lot of money on Instacart, tell you that much. Um, so those those poor boys shuttling back and forth for me. But I just kept it. I was just like, I had... And again, this goes down with my preparation in coming to Tampa as well. You know, uh, I was lucky enough in Tampa to choose not the host hotel, but another hotel that I knew had a kitchenette. Or like a ah. full... Sorry, a full-fledged kitchen other than an oven. Um, so I could cook mostly my food fresh, everything like that. I bought a bunch of eggs while I was down there. Um, but I froze like a ton of fish, like probably like, like a couple pounds of fish and just like <laughs> seal packed everything. And again, this yeah. goes into like strategically packing things, but if you freeze anything, you can pretty much get it through TSA. Uh, yeah. so I just froze everything. And if I knew I wasn't going to use it, I just tossed it right in the freezer when I got into the hotel in Tampa. And so I did have some meat left, albeit I had to like buy some like you know as natural as i could like turkey deli deli meats and things like that just to you know for something fill in the gaps that's it right and i mean at that point i kind of figured like less is probably more at this point so i just kind of like just stuck it out as much as i could yeah. Yeah. Uh, so with with flying for shows, I mean, I assume that pretty much, you know, up there, pretty much any time you compete, you're flying. 
right? Mostly, yeah. Point. Yeah, the last few years, definitely, yeah. yeah. There's not really any so, shows close by. Okay, okay. I'd like, Toronto is how far from Toronto's you? Toronto's about a... T- probably like a 15-hour drive. Oh, <laughs> jeez. <laughs> okay yeah no never mind never mind maybe yeah just so, under that but yeah it's it's, it's, a, it's a bit of a distance yeah god damn um so like uh any uh lessons uh in dealing with tsa for traveling competitors like fr- i always tell people free stuff if you're taking a cooler bag like make sure that your ice packs are frozen don't yeah. use the gel ones but use yeah. the ones that are solid fill that freeze because yeah. if they thaw yeah. out you're going to be fucked that's it um, yeah. did you, you ever had any issues with anything else i have not i this is the first time i've had trouble they actually took away some of my like makeups and lotions but like i oh. was <laughs> with, i know i was like of all the things but i bought a whole bunch of like bottles with caps and stuff and they're all under the three point two ounces or whatever you need yeah. legally are allowed to fly with it so i prioritized my liquids for my condiments and things like that or like a shampoo that i needed for my hair so i just like consolidated don't mix that shit up no that would taste nasty <laughs> but your tongue would be silky smooth um, it would or your hair would smell very interesting <laughs> or, yeah like sugar-free ketchup um yeah. why am i hungry all the time the yeah, smell right? is just following me oh around my god i smell amazing <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, freezing everything. I freeze most of my food. Like, I don't love to eat on planes or in and around flying anyway. I find with the pressure in the cabins, mm. it really upsets my stomach. So I typically try to not eat on those. Like, I'll, you know, eat before I get to the airport. You know, if I've got a layover, definitely. But if it's a quick, like, soup, soup, I probably won't eat. So everything is frozen for the for the tsa i haven't had too many okay. issues yeah nice nice so uh tupelo and tampa was that your whole season this year you didn't do anything that was my that? whole season i had planned another one um i was gonna i was toying with the idea of doing legion um mm-hmm. in reno at the end of september but honestly after getting the feedback from tyler and steve weinberger after tampa it was put on size i'm like I'm not going to be able to put on size or enough. But size. you'd already committed to Tupelo at that. I point. I already paid for everything for Tupelo, so I honestly went into Tupelo being like, "Ah, oh, farts! Like this is like, <laughs> I'm going to get last again. Like this sucks." I'm like, "Okay, just going to make the most of it. I'm going to visit a new, you know, a new state, a new city. I'll have some barbecue. Like it'll be great." <laughs> and so go I, see I Elvis's honestly, house. Go see Elvis's house, which is super underwhelming, and. <laughs> And, like, the super typical, stereotypical Elvis old boomer fans all hanging around there, carted oh God, in on yes. coach buses. Oh, yeah, classic. Oh, my God. From from the retirement home. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, it's their one yeah. outing. And yeah. uh, so I I honestly had zero expectations, and I just kept telling myself. Like, I was, I was upset with myself, for sure, for Tampa. And so mm-hmm. I was going in kind of pissy, especially after, like, the, the salt that was in the wound after all the travel home, right? I was just like, just get me home. <laughs> you know, like, why won't you let me go home? So I, I mean, was... it's really a kind of a kind of a sad sack story. It's like, okay, we go to this show, hopes are high, and you get your ass kicked at the show, and then yeah. you get your ass kicked all the way back home as right. well, and That's it takes it. you like, it never ended. three times as long as it should to get there. Ended. Yeah, it was like four yeah. days of ass kicking. So, yeah. and like, don't get me wrong, I did not think I would win Tampa by any <clears> means. I know it's a top tier show, and it was one of those situations where you kind of have to pick a show that's based on where your body is where your mind is, um, where your financials are, you know, and, (laughs) and, and I kind of went into Tampa being like, you know what, I'm going to get up against, against these girls next to these girls. Tyler can see me again, you know, after Toronto from last year. And I thought it more so of a, like, let's see where I'm at. Let's try to hurt some feelings. And just kind of go with it. Unfortunately, the feelings that were hurt. Apparently, you did. (laughs) Yeah, I really deeply hurt my own feelings. (laughs) Well, you live and learn, right? That's it. And, like, yeah, it's fine. No big deal. And so, like, after the feedback I got from Tyler, he was just like, just put on more size. And Steve Weinberger gave me a very short, like, you were correct. (laughs) Put on size. So, yeah, short and sweet. And so I was just like, farts. Like, I'll just, I'll just do it. It's already paid for. Let's go. And, you know, different set of judges, different set of eyes. Um, and this is, I'm going to kind of like rope this into what just happened at uh, the Rising Phoenix there, too, with a different set mm-hmm. of eyes and the non-Olympia judges 
versus mm -hmm. Olympia judges. I think there's like a criteria one follows and there's another criteria that others have in their own head about it. So yeah. I think I got in front of a set of judges that have are following the criteria <clears throat> for the most part. Uh, yeah, yeah. And so f for those playing at home, uh, playing at home who weren't following along maybe tampa was 15th i think so you said oh, yeah. last, I was like third last but you placed yeah, I, but you placed yeah by skin yeah. of my teeth uh, yeah 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 and um tupelo then was top five fifth yeah i came home with which, hardware that's all i keep saying i brought home some hardware awesome. that's all yeah which that's is great. dope yeah 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 and it, it was funny like watching the rising phoenix yesterday um like uh Jody, who won for uh, women's physique, like I was watching prejudging, and I'm like, she absolutely needs to win this. And based yeah. on positioning, it didn't didn't look like she was going to. No. Um, and I'm like, she's getting robbed because she needs yeah. to win this, and she did. And so yeah. she was not the biggest on stage, but she mm -hmm. was just super conditioned yeah. and like just had a really really dense tight package. Yeah. Which I think is really what women's physique is supposed to be. Thank you, and I would I couldn't agree more. Couldn't agree more. So I thought that was really cool to see. And uh, was it Yvonne who took second? Yep, Yvonne. Um, also, yep. also fit those same criteria, mm -hmm. um, which was cool. Uh, it's just I'm, I'm kind of going off memory here. She seemed quite a bit taller, but um, still taller. like the same kind yeah, of much taller. basic. Like you, you'd put them in the same category. Like it's not yeah. like were, circle, yeah. circle, circle, square. <laughs> yeah, she was. Yeah, no, I thought I thought it was a great pick. And, you know, um, everyone thought Alex was going to be and I love Alex Hall. She looked beautiful last year. I competed against her at the same show last year. And where I came, I think, eighth. And she looked amazing. And she, you could just tell as soon as she came out, not quite as the crispy Alex that we knew from the year before. Yeah, she was um, off. She was a little off. And very off compared to Jody, because Jody was crispy, right? And right. so, like, standing next to her was like, well, that's obvious, right? But say standing <laughs> next to, like, Lanka or any one of the other girls, right? It was like, okay, it could be close. I think Paula has a strange beautiful girl um just like parts of her don't qu quite fit you know what i mean yet and i think she I, just needs I, time i kind of agree yeah i kind and of I agree think you yeah. mentioned it in your tupelo review where it's just like this is like her fifth show right at yeah. some point and like there's nothing you can do more if you're just constantly battering yourself you know week <laughs> after week right yeah. like nothing's in, gonna in, happen across multiple continents by the way that's it it's the like... travel like she's from finland yeah, and she you did know? like Spain and Portugal, and then Texas, Tampa, Tupelo, and then Arizona. <laughs> Arizona. I think. It's like, yeah. I, I, I it's hope like, she fuck just me. Like, I hope she hangs it up. Like my joints <laughs> hurt watching her. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like if someone like her. It's like okay, I think you you've tapped out on what you're going to do this year. And like, yeah. if I was coaching her, clearly not. Um, but uh, I'd be like, let's take a year off. Yeah. And let's focus on like really fixing and improving some things and taking the yeah. time to do it. And there's, yeah. there's several people that I'd say, I'd say that too. And, and that's the kind of, that's what I did. Right. And that's, I chose to hang it up. Like I could very well have gone mm. on and done Legion, but like at what, like why? Right. If the, if I need, I need food in me to be able to grow my back. I know my back, my, my, my whole back needs density and width. And I'm, I can't just train back for the next six weeks or not even four weeks that. <laughs> yeah less even less than well, I mean, that right you, you can you can do anything i can so. but i mean like is it really gonna like for me i don't think that's that's just not how it's gonna work and that's not gonna be fun yeah. it's gonna be expensive and you know i need to have a i need those three things need to all be you know well i mean you can you can pretty much predict what the outcome would be i mean you you thought that for tupelo as well probably going yeah. into it and you were wrong yeah but uh at the same time you're like well you know i think reasonable people can make you know you kind of you kind of place a bet. You're like, this is what I think is likely to happen. And you can, like, you've got the ability to kind of see the weaknesses in yourself. You're not, yes. you're not going to a show like Tampa and be like, well, fuck those guys. I should have been third. No. And like, cause some, some people bring <laughs> yeah, that. I'm more realistic <laughs> than that. That's for sure. <laughs> you want to hear a super funny story? Love it. This is, this is from yesterday. And so, um, for my website, I've hired, this is going to seem very circuitous, but trust me, there's a big payoff here. <laughs> okay. Um, 
<laughs> I've hired a search engine optimization um, specialist. She lives in Pakistan, I think. And, you know, because everybody there is like, you know, an absolute wizard when wizard it comes to anything computer. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. So, yeah. and she sent me this spreadsheet a couple weeks back of like, hey, here's some um, pages on your website that have, have broken links. I need you to go into those pages and just edit those links and fix them. I'm like, all right, cool. So I'm going back. There's like, you know, one of them is this blog post from 2018 that I wrote. And it's like, you know, women's physique judging standards, um, what the judges are really after here. Um, and so there was like a link to like my coaching services page down at the bottom that had changed. So I had to go and update the URL and yeah. I scroll back up. I'm like, what is, hold on, what's that? What and so, yeah. <laughs> yeah, what did I write? And, um, so I said, let's just look at what's happened here since the division was introduced. Because it was only like six years old at that point. I think it was yeah, in like 2012 true. or something like yeah. that. So I'm like, here's Dana Lynn Bailey who won the first Physique Olympia. And here is just, you know, I just went to the most recent pro show I could find. And here's the person who won that. And look <laughs> at her next to Dana Lynn Bailey. And it's yeah. like, it, like, this is six years evolution of the sport. It's absolutely ridiculous. And that oh, person was you at Vancouver. Oh, was it? <laughs> Yeah. That is funny. Oh, that like is funny. Very, very randomly, I had no idea who you oh, were, man. but yeah. having won Vancouver, it was your picture right there next to yeah, her, and you're just like completely <laughs> blowing her out of the water in all directions. And it's, so, and it's yeah, very different physiques, very different yeah. physiques from then. And I just found that yesterday after we had this interview scheduled, it's like how fucking oh, weird is that? The universe is talking to you. Oh, that's I know, funny. right? Yeah, oh, that's super cool. weird. Yeah, and like it has evolved immensely, and I still don't quite know what they're looking for. <laughs> uh, to be well, honest, I'm not sure they do either. No, to be honest, and I always thought like there should, you know, we all say there should be a very clear distinction between women's physique and women's bodybuilding. And as mm -hmm. of late, it's always been, yeah, the bodybuilding girls are big, but they're not like uh, conditioning wise, they weren't anything special. And then the women's mm -hmm. physique women were like peels like this guy you know and <laughs> and and then and big right so i'm like this is so backwards right and so i would say the rising phoenix just yesterday finally someone came to the stage with both size and conditioning and yeah. i believe that in women's physique jody was rewarded yes for her conditioning but because she was well-rounded, uh, had a well-rounded physique to a lot of those girls. And she wasn't She had appropriate big. size. She had appropriate size for what they wanted initially back in 2013 or 12 or whatever yeah. it is, right? And yeah. I'm pretty sure I have reviewed it several times after all the years of getting my feedback and being like, right, no striations, no deep cuts in the quads. Got it. So yeah. <laughs> I'm still fighting yeah. with, and, it's, and it is a battle. It's like, what do I want to look like? What am I comfortable with doing? You know, how mm -hmm. do I still be myself on stage? But like, how do I appease the judges so that they give me, you know, a better placing? So right, and I've I've always complained that there's a disconnect between you know if you go and read the judging standards online, but and just compare that to how it's actually implemented um, in practice. It's like, can we update those written standards a little bit? Because that's, that's not it. what's happening. I, I would like for them to update it and update it in their like whatever you are want to seeing mm -hmm. and rewarding update that but then at least i have no reason to go back and fact check you basically yeah right? yeah <laughs> exactly like, just go ahead and say like yeah it's not bodybuilding but you should be about as fucking lean as you can possibly be <laughs> yeah like and if that's the case that, then cool then i can do that yeah and and you know you should be big but if you're too big we're gonna say you should be in bodybuilding like that to me that's vague but that's an okay standard but like i think it. you can uh, you can have like a visual gut check, like, huh, physique, bodybuilding, eh, and you just right. kind of say, probably more here. That's it. And I think that's okay. I mean, if you look at who won in both of those categories yesterday, Jody and Angela, yeah. and uh, spoiler alert, by the way, if anybody's watching that yeah, on sorry. TiVo or anything, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> um, TiVo. I mean, it's like, <laughs> I'm showing my age here. Uh, like, the, the conditioning was pretty similar. I mean, very, Angela was very... significantly bigger, of yeah, course. She, yeah, of um, course. And looked absolutely insane. But yeah. it's like, you know, it, it, if you're just going on a conditioning term, like, they're, they're not too dissimilar. Not there. too far, exactly. Yeah. Yet. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So, so um, when, take me back, when did you turn pro? I turned pro in 2017 at our 2017. Canadian Nationals in Vancouver. Okay. All right. Yeah. And that was still in physique. Have you always competed in physique? That was in physique. My very, very first uh, amateur show in London, Ontario was women's figure. Okay. 
I don't know why. Didn't I last long. With the women's. Uh, yeah, they basically just said, like, they basically said, nah, moving on up. And I think it was more so, like, uh, we've got this new division. Let's, like, let's pile some people in there. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I did. I liked it. I mean, to be honest, I actually hate the posing part, like, the routine part. I dread it. Oh, really? Yeah. Um, be- because it feels like a lot of pressure? Like a lot of creativity. No, I'm not a good dancer, and therefore I'm not a very good poser, I don't think. Uh, I mean, yeah. I try to have as much fun as I can on there, you know, and most of the time I have, I throw something together, or this year I actually had someone make something for me, but even then, like, it rarely sticks. So I just, <laughs> up there, like, at one point, I think last year, my boyfriend is like, oh, she's down on the ground. Oh, she's doing, oh, she's made this up, hasn't she? <laughs> yeah, oh, she like, she just, is going off script. She's, okay. Yeah, she's <laughs> calling an audible. So, yeah. And I, yeah, and so I, I went from, yeah, physique. It was pretty, pretty, felt like a pretty normal national, um, natural transition. Cool. So Canadian National 2017, which means that, was that Vancouver show? Was that your pro debut? So this was before the IFBB had a little divorce, right? Remember, it was like Raphael oh, yeah. and, yeah. So this was just before the divorce happened. So, um, okay. uh, Across Canada, we didn't have all one encompassing division like we do now for amateurs. Like, you guys have NPC. We had, like, something in the East Coast or Atlantic something. Ontario was the Ontario Physique Association. And then BC was the British Columbia BCABBA, British Columbia so this Association is Bodybuilding something. Pre CPA. Pre CPA, and so then the just after I got my pro card, they had a divorce, and then it became the CPA, and that's when they just started loosey goosey handing everyone out pro cards. <laughs> <laughs> you get well, a pro I mean, you card. gotta you get, get a pro card. Uh, that's a, it's the Oprah style giveaway for exactly. pro cards. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, like, well, because oh, those national third, shows, here's a pro card. yeah, those national shows, like they've got to draw people in by saying we're awarding this many pro cards. I'm yeah, like, can we make it a little bit more exclusive, please? Well, exactly. So I pride yeah. myself on the fact that I got my nationals because, or my national, my pro card at nationals because there actually was a nationals then, and now there's like a bunch, and. I won my division and I won the overall and I got best poser. So, I mean, like it was like a kind of a clean sweep. That's the trifecta, the hat trick. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Thank you. Hockey term. There you go. I I try. Yeah. That's good. That's good. (laughs) If you try to get me to explain offsides, it's not going to happen. Yeah. I'm still a can't. player. Yeah, I never okay. played it, so <laughs> you're good. <laughs> well, I played soccer growing up. It's the same thing. I don't understand. So did I. Either. Oh, really? You're still working yeah. on that one? Okay, I got that one on lock. Yeah, we'll talk I would, later. I wouldn't yeah. say I'm working on it. No. no. <laughs> I've, I've given up. I've resigned myself up. to the yeah, fact that I'm never going to like, get it. No more. No more. Oh fuck! I don't even run. Like <laughs> I, I will. I will walk at about 3.3 miles an hour on the treadmill. Anything above that, it's like <laughs> not today. Not much, today, guys. son. No. No. I'm old. No so yeah, we're not doing you. that shit. Yeah. So was, was so was Vancouver still was that your first show, pro show or Toronto? Okay, I did Toronto in 2018 in June I think after my pro card. So my pro debut was Toronto where I came fourth. It's pretty fourth. nice. Not bad. Um, Toronto's a bigger show. Toronto's a bigger show. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Ron Hache does a really good job. I find. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. he runs a pretty good show. And that was like up against like um, Dan, yeah, Danny, uh, Portuguese girl. Fuck, mm-hmm. I don't remember. Anyway, Danny I know who you're talking about. Danny, yeah, Danny, um, Eleonora, something or other. I don't know if Jody Bone. I think Jody Bone was then still doing uh, fitness at the time, but okay. yeah, it was up against some pretty like big wig girls. So that Legit. was that was nice. Yeah, that was nice yeah. to come home too. Yeah. Yeah. So do you kind of plan out your years in advance? Like, was the plan like, okay, we're doing Toronto, then we're doing Vancouver? Or is it kind of like, I mean, I was hey, living... that went well, let's do this? <laughs> yeah, kind of. I was, I mean, I have, I grew up in Ontario, so I would have had family and friends around there. So I'm like, okay, well, it's easy to get anywhere I need to go because my parents will drive me. And then I was living in British Columbia. So I was like, oh. well, I've got friends who live in BC, so I can stay there. So really it was like, convenience i guess yeah for a lot of those shows and i knew people and yeah it was mostly convenience at that point for those two shows and then 
and then I yeah so then I did Toronto and then I had a few weeks and then I think Vancouver happened in July and then I mm-hmm. won that one that was totally unexpected and then <laughs> I'm still and then, I'm still surprised by all of it really <laughs> let, let's linger on that for a little bit I mean it, it's six years ago but let's just linger yeah. on that for a second so you're in there I mean you know they're, they're calling out the numbers for fifth fourth and you're still still standing up there like I've had this experience recently myself where it's totally unexpected and you're like wait yeah. what the fuck is you're happening like, here they're double checking like, your button and you're like is that me is that my name e- yeah e- exactly <laughs> like what what's that moment feel like because at this point it's your second show second pro yeah. show yeah and like how surreal was that it surreal is exactly the word i was like i had again like i was up against these girls whom i've idolized or looked up to you know fangirled over for many years now watching them come up like i remember my first provincials in ontario where i looked like absolute dog shit i'll send you (laughs) pictures later like it was like pillsbury doughboy rolled over by a oh it was awful waterlogged something tells me it's not that bad it wasn't no it was bad and then (laughs) some my coach whoever he was he should have been like "Uh -uh." so i I love to think that there there's people doing interviews five years from now that are referring back to me that way as well like my (laughs) coach whoever the fuck that shit was no it's like that american idol syndrome right where you're like you think you sound way better than you do yeah and then someone's yeah. like, oh, my God, you're so good. And then really you get up on stage in front of actual experts. They're like, get her off. Like the cane comes. So yeah. it was bad. And so I was like, I remember watching Eleonora get her win that show and then go on and get her pro card after being in the WBFF. So she had to like requalify through all those regional provincial stages. And, and then I was up against her in Vancouver and I beat her. And I thought that was so, so cool. And so I have a friend who's a photographer in BC. And so he's kind of got like, you know, on the, on the diagonal pictures of us and me being like, what? Yes. What? 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 Like, it's just like a, like a montage. That's kind of like a behind the scenes kind of thing. Yeah. I'm like, oh my yeah. God, it was me. And so like, it was cool. And then it was like the same MC who called me out for my pro card was the same guy who called me for that win and so it was like a cool little full circle thing yeah it was really cool nice yeah yeah, the experience that I had I mean it was just for my master's class in a show that I did back in June um, but after prejudging it's like okay well there's three guys in this class I'm third just because you know the judges work you a certain way and you kind yeah. of expect like okay cool and so they said in third place and I just take a step towards the stage and it wasn't totally my number expecting I'm like, it yeah step back. I'm like oh like, second oh, cool okay so he's like okay in second place and, and, here, then, and, and I do the same thing forward. again I'm like, what the fuck <laughs> I mean, at that point, you're really just kind of in shock. And then you're like, like either I, I won or I didn't even place. <laughs> or, or they're only awarding top two here or something Yeah, or like that. something of my luck, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, and I don't honestly remember anything that happened after that. Like, I, oh, I clearly, funny. like, I've got the medal somewhere. Over, it's right there. So I yeah. got it clearly, but I don't remember getting it. Yeah. Um, it was just oh, weird. Cool. So. Yeah. yeah, I that wish I would have had a boyfriend like. off the side of the stage, like snapping those right? pictures snap because those pics. yeah, right? Because <laughs> yeah. it's yeah, I know. So it was great. It was cool. It was a lot of fun. And I had like friends. Mm. It's nice to have friends there. You know, the last few shows and years of traveling, I haven't had anyone there. Right. Um, my really yeah. good friend Robin, another pro bodybuilder, she was in Tampa with me, so that was nice. But it wasn't a good outcome, so I came down the stairs and I looked at her. I'm like, I'll be back. <laughs> I just grabbed yeah. my stuff and I left. And she's like, Oh, we're going back to the hotel. I'm like, Oh yeah, we're going back to the hotel. <laughs> Get me out of here. <laughs> oh man, man. So at, at, that was 2018. Have you taken yeah. any years off um, since then, or have you been hitting uh, well, something annually? The world shut down, and I was forced to take off about three years. So oh, yeah. three to years. It, yeah. So I last the last show before the pandemic was Rising Phoenix, two thousand nineteen. Okay. Yeah, and then last so, year and was that my... that was. So that that show was intended to be your last one of twenty nineteen. You're like, all right, come back for twenty twenty, yeah, and then twenty twenty said, and then the fuck world you. Was, yeah, yeah, everything shut yeah. down, and in Canada we were particularly strict with some of the lockdowns. So mm-hmm. I I. I did what I could, but I mean, I really honestly thought and still think that w- that those three years would have been my like awesome comeuppance just because like my head was so right. You know, I was, you know, still working and making good amount of money. So I was really confident in just me and everything. And yeah. like my, I was in my zone and that happened and I totally got, got kicked. And, yeah. <laughs> and like by the end of, 
I think 2020, I pretty much well just accumulated some pieces of equipment for my, and I just walked. I was just like, I'm, well, I got to get my steps in, and I was just walking. So I definitely feel like I lost some size, for sure. How could you not? Mm -hmm. yeah. um, you know, because, like, you're also, you're going to, like, slow supplementation. You're going to slow up a lot of things, right? Because, like, what's the point? Right. I might as well get my health back. And health back took three years. <laughs> three, oh. I, I mean, I was good in a year, but, like, the world was like, yeah. no, no, you got two more to go. So, like, yeah, by we're, the we're end still... of... Yeah, hold on, kid. So we're not caught like, up with you yet. <laughs> that's right. So by, like, end of... In, in, like, the 2021, I finally was like, forget it. I'm finding a gym. And so I found some friends who had an illegal operation. And <laughs> I just went super nice. early in the morning. Didn't really turn the lights on, right? Just to not draw any attention. And I started to lights. train. That's it. You can feel your way around a gym. And totally. Yeah. <laughs> Boo. Knees. <laughs> Stub a toe. Um, I, the, you, know what the, uh, you know what the most uh, common accidents are as far as, like, shins and toes, though? Like, you know those pieces of equipment, the ones that you always watch out for. Like, the like there's certain ones. Well, box, oh, like for me, it's like, well, there's certain <laughs> ones. Like, there's one. I've left so much shin DNA on this Blech. one fucking <laughs> incline machine press. Yeah. <laughs> at one of the gyms because it's got you know the the seat that goes up and down right. and it's got the little socket that the thing sits into well the socket sits the out socket like right into the walking like space it's perfect yeah yeah or like there's a hammer strength seated calf raise um, and it's one that's in like every gym and that thing is like such a shin hazard like you're, you gotta swing a leg over it to get into it and then it's like bang every single yeah, time yeah every time never misses yeah yeah, yeah. Yeah. Just, so, so yeah, the the in the dark, it's a little bit more of a challenge. It's more sure. of a challenge, but you know, keep your keep your wits about, and you'll be fine. Yeah. So yeah. So, so do you feel in, in terms of like physique wise, you think you bounce back from that? Like if you no. look at where you were in 2019. No, I think. Uh, so what did I do in 2019? Yeah, I did the two shows 2019, and I I still don't think I was like I had like uh, an outstanding physique anyway. Um, I think I came ninth in rising phoenix but i beat a couple girls that i was like well eh, i'll take the ninth if i beat some of those like big olympia girls so yeah. um yeah and i wanted to come back and i knew and it's always been my back that needs the depth and the width mm -hmm. so i mean that's always just that's always just been my focus like legs don't really need to come up much more i can get them a little bit tighter um mm -hmm. same with my glutes i think my upper body generally just needs a little bit more to catch up like i think i caught up a little bit from like 23 to to today but yeah i i, I needed those years yeah um here, here's something i always like to ask people what is the hardest part of bodybuilding for you hmm. and i don't mean like you know i mean it can be like oh diet training or it could be like off season prep it could yeah. be like you know trying to keep my hematocrit in range or whatever it's like yeah. i don't know what what's hard it's um it's about yeah i think off season for me is the most challenging i can diet and i can eat the same thing and i can restrict i find it a lot easier to restrict myself than to push myself in the other direction and start seeing like body fat come on or um i mean as long as i feel like i'm getting some sort of <sighs> reward from it whether it be like strength or some size improvements the right kind of size then it's usually okay for me goal getting and goal setting is very it, it's got to be very tangible it, the um off season it's just everything happens at a slower pace so like you know yeah. things that are happening but there has to be more trust like yeah. well you know I, I don't see changes in my photos this week versus last week it's like well yeah. you shouldn't in the off season if you well, do it's probably because you're getting fat that's it right and so it's 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 trust is a big one you've got to trust you know everyone's like trust the process but it's so true um, well, sometimes you your need... process sucks though and you're like you're it. right you're right <laughs> and i think and sometimes it's hard to know when to divert from that crappy process onto a different one right because for me like if i just keep going just keep going i'm in my head whether i'm um, striving to get leaner or, you know, putting on size to me, I'm like, I'm always turning a corner and every time I turn that corner, it's going to be there. Right. I'm really hopeful it's going to be there. And every time mm -hmm. it's not, I'm like, that's okay. It's going to be the next corner. And so like, I'm perpetually turning corners and being like, ah, okay, it's not there. Oh, okay. It's not there yet, but it's going to be there. <laughs> so in that case, like you said, like it's trusting, 
if how many corners do I turn before I go, okay, look, I'm obviously turning right when I should be turning left, right, this whole yeah. time, you know? Like, and do you have a good enough map that's kind of drawing the way where you can say, like, well, I'm at this stage in the map, okay, like, you know, are you, like, how closely do you monitor, like, your training performance? Um, are I you, like, super lab... type A about it, or? No, I could be more type A about it. I could be a little tighter on things. However, I have started, like, logging in a little notebook i'm a very paper and pencil kind of girl i'm not into the technology i hate it if i couldn't if i didn't have to have social media i wouldn't um yeah. but <laughs> i hate it um so yeah I'm, i've started now i'm gonna log and i'm gonna actually like interpret my results and i'm gonna take time with a program i've set up that feels good so like this week is kind of like what's feeling good what am i getting you know good range of motion on what am i getting a good pump on like what feels good where do i feel strong and like where do i feel strong in my weaker movements or in my weaker body parts and i'm gonna really focus on not being like the adhd squirrel that i usually am and like just keeping doing something different every day yeah just because it feels cool right or this yeah. looks neat or like i saw this guy josh bryant and like he did something cool i'm gonna do that too so i'm gonna yeah. like i'm gonna treat my training like i treat my clients training really i so, mean that's what it comes down to that's yeah. what, what i tell my clients as well it's like here's the program like this is written up but i'm not you know as an online coach i'm not watching you do all this stuff yeah. so you're gonna have to be an active participant in this and so what i always want you to do is think about stimulus to fatigue ratio like just because i like this exercise doesn't mean it's clicking for you right. and if some if some variation of it that does the same thing works better let's do that let's instead. do it 100 yeah, talk about it yeah. and do it yeah totally yeah. so that's kind of my i'm in my like feel out phase right now so i've done like maybe f three days of my like five ish split and <laughs> sorry you you're, you're embarrassing me i'm in week nine of my feel out phase post show oh, okay. right now so i've i've been I, I i legitimately i took some time off after yeah. my show it was in june yeah what is it? it's almost oh, it's almost september it's now Emil fuck me of, yeah. <laughs> so Maybe it's time to make I, a decision here darren <laughs> yeah well for a while i was training like zero to one times a week that was for about yeah. six weeks just Fair. because i was so burnt out i'm like yeah. fuck all of this yeah and what i what i really needed was just like a break from bodybuilding but i've got clients to check in with every day it's like you can't, you it can't, can't take a break from me really. yeah, so no, you i'm like well i'm just it. gonna not go to the gym for a while That's and so it. i didn't honestly yeah. it was it was lovely i enjoyed it so but yeah and honestly like and this then you get used time. to it <laughs> i know it's too easy to get used to it too i did that after the olympia in 2018 i actually went and did crossfit for like four months I was oh, like, wow. if I have to just curl a bar again, I'm going to scream. And it was just like touching the steel. It was like, ah, it burns. So I just, <laughs> I was like, you know, and I'm still too competitive to not do anything. And mm -hmm. it's kind of how I got into bodybuilding in the first place. And mm -hmm. so that's, I'm just like, I'm just going to join CrossFit. And I'm going to come in and I'm going to do what they tell me to do. And I did. And that lasted for four months. And you're like, that fuck this. That lasted for four months. And I was like, <laughs> if I do an overhead snatch one more time, I swear. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, there's a shelf life on things. You can only, only do something for so long. And that's, then that's kind of like where I am with, with just like standard hypertrophy training right now. It's like, I needed that time off. Like I need to let my brain reset, yeah. let my body reset a little bit too. Cause it's yeah. been like, you know, I haven't given myself a good two weeks off in 15 years. How, exactly. Yeah, exactly. So it's like, Let's take two months. Whatever. That's right. Fine. Yeah. I'm not going to die. Do have a, I have a family trip planned to Sicily in the end of October. And so I plan oh, on like damn. being pretty tight ish with food and diet until then. And then I'm like, you know what? I'm not going to worry about it's like it's like eight days there. So I'm like, I'm not going to worry about trying to find a gym in remote Sicily. I'm like, I'm, I'll be here with my Aperol spritz. Thank you very much. Yeah. I mean, unless you're actively trying to fuck yourself over, you can't really do that much harm in eight days. That's it. I'm like, I'm just going to walk around the island in a day, right? Yeah. It's fine. And it's yeah. going to be amazing, and you're going to come back in the best mood you've been in in years, just probably. full of cannoli, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That sounds awesome. <laughs> <laughs> cannoli and so cheap wine, any... that's what I'm going for. Oh, well, because it's all cheap. Uh, yeah. Like, the good stuff is cheap. That's Man. right. It's more, yeah, cheaper than water, I think. Yeah. Um, do you have any plans for 2025 yet, or is that TBD? You know, a little TBD. Um, I think another reason why I decided to pack it in after Tupelo was I'm like, okay, well, that gives me like an extra month, right, of a possible like eight to nine to ten month just solid off season, you know, and I'm just trying to I'm trying to come out different and I will be very upset with myself if I am not improved in at least 
at least a year. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, and even if it's like this time next year, you see me on stage. I don't think so, but um, you know, I, it would, it'll probably be early 2026. I think. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Take the time. Take the time. Yeah. Are you? Uh, I, I gather from this, are you coaching yourself? I have a no. Uh, Shelby Starnes is my coach. Um, okay. And he, he mostly does my nutrition and the like, my accountability buddy, right? Who just tells me to, <laughs> to get my head out of my ass most of the time and stuff like that. So like again, kind of like the way you like, it's it's more of a collaboration, I would say. Um, yeah. I like to pay for a coach. Um, you know, I've had coaches in the past you know. who've been not that much, and I feel like I then don't get that much out of it. Uh, one of my best friends, Robin, again, she was coaching me. I always joke with her that I fired her uh, because I thought I valued our friendship so much more than her as a coach. And I know, like, I'll always be there for her to bounce ideas off for clients, and she'll always help me. So I'm like, we're just best buds. Like, I just want to be your buddy. I don't want to be your client. So. <laughs> Um, but she's just as harsh on me as some other, my other coaches. So I would rather just pay for Shelby who is, you know, well worth the money and, you know, get his feedback on stuff and he can tell me to shut the hell up and just work or, you know, do something different. So that's what I want. And then as for training, I do myself in the gym. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. I, uh, I always prefer to have a coach myself. I could have said pretty much everything you just did there. Um, like I've had some ones that, you know, weren't worth, you know, <laughs> the, their plans weren't, weren't worth anything as toilet paper, no. much less as bodybuilding yeah. plans. Yeah, that, yeah. And, and somewhere it's like, well, they're just, there's no real follow up. They're like, how, how like, you doing? Yeah, cool. Good. Wait, okay. Going. Great. Like, yeah, what I'm like. Paying you for? I like. Yeah. I'd like a little bit more. Like, I don't need you to change everything every week, but like, no. I'm asking some questions. I'd like more than a zero to one word answer on those. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, but I've had some who were great, and uh, I ended up. I coached myself on this last prep. Cool. I didn't want to. Um, oh. it was not my choice. <laughs> not not <laughs> a, it sucked ass. Actually, I, I highly highly do not recommend it. Yeah. Zero stars. <laughs> Zero would stars. not repeat. <laughs> Um, like I can do it. I know everything that I need to do, but it's like trying to evaluate yourself every week. It's like, well, I'm still a fucking fat ass. Okay. Yeah. (laughs) Well, that's it. And especially in this, this game, like all of us have a little bit of BD, right? We're all like suffering from what we see in the mirror is not what is actually there. And that's body dysmorphia for those playing. Yeah. Sorry. Body dysmorphia. (laughs) And it's, uh, we all have it. And it's it's just sometimes nice to have that third set of eyes who, you know, who just, doesn't really care right <laughs> whether yeah. you do well or not right <laughs> right the, like their opinion is just like whatever you know or and like even like with the proximity bias right having someone who's really close to you like a boyfriend wife you know girlfriend whatever and sometimes they're like you look great i'm like no I yeah especially if, if that person doesn't have a competitive eye <laughs> that's it and so you know my boyfriend bless his heart he loves me to death right and he said like this is the best i've seen you and we've only been together for two years with well, we've been together for like the whole pandemic, like five years, but two mm-hmm. of those years have been me competing. And he's like, well, you look better than last time. Right. And I'm like, bless your heart. I need more than that. <laughs> <laughs> bless your heart. So you could get by in the South if you can talk yeah, like that's that. Right. Bless yeah. your heart. Nice to your yeah. face. Dick to your, yeah. behind your back. Yeah. Uh-huh. yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> well, and that, that's, so that's, that's a whole other conversation there. So you, you, you got with him during the pandemic. Right and so at the, right, at the, right he, at the very beginning, it was like, Oh, and we're in lockdown. <laughs> yeah. And so yeah. he gets to experience that with you and like not going to the gym and then eventually like, Hey, I'm going to the gym illegally. This is cool too. Yeah. <laughs> and, and then he's like, he probably gets to experience the switch where you're like, okay, now I'm in prep and I'm doing a show. So things are going to change a little bit here. Like what was yeah. that like for him? <laughs> I think it was a bit of a shock. I think I think one of our first dates, you know, dining outside, we went to this really great um, burger joint hole in the wall in Hamilton. On I think it was Hamilton, Brantford or Hamilton, Ontario. It was great. It was called Admirals. It was just like this old, you know, Polish man cooking burgers on like a flat top that hadn't been cleaned since like the 1940s. And perfect. We call know, that yeah. seasoned. Oh, yeah, it was great. And it was like this outrageous burger. And of course, we ate it. And I've got an appetite. A girl can eat. Um, And I crushed it. And like my boyfriend's a bigger man than me. And he did not crush his. And I think that's when he first fell in love. And so I think the first impression was, oh, yeah, this girl's going to eat with me. This is going to be great. And then, of course, like 
the switch flips, right? And then I go, by the way, I probably have an eating disorder and I'm going to be super controlling for the next nine months. So, you know, up until the show. So I think it was... If you've never seen anybody measure everything they eat down to the gram, <laughs> you're about to ad yeah. nauseum forever. That's right. Oh, you're going to eat me to eat the same three meals every day repeated. Yeah. Is that so true? Think, three meals? No. I mean, like, I eat, like, it, like, my breakfast will be a meal, but I'll probably have a breakfast that's a breakfast okay. like meal four yeah. is probably really similar to meal one and meal two and five are probably pretty similar gotcha I mean? okay okay yeah. yeah so i think you know and i think my parents still have the same reaction where they're like are you done like do you get to eat real food now and i always think that's such a yeah. silly thing to say i'm like what do you mean real yeah. food this is more real than anything else so i think everyone's learned to just like all right that's that's Alyssa. that's any competitor really so it i is, think he's but... accepted it we, we are all kind of like uh, uh, the window into this world for most other people. Like they, really, they might know one person who does this and it's us. Yeah. And so we're, we're the weirdo always. The, always. Um, yeah. And I, I have this theory like that's why there's usually such great camaraderie backstage at shows because you're finally with a group of people who all of them get it. Like yeah. from the top down, they yeah. all know they're all doing the same stuff. We've all done the same drive, you know, drive your feet till you bleed into that treadmill and mm -hmm. all of it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. All of yeah. It. You're like, I'm going to start. I'm just going to unzip this couch cushion here and just start peeling off some of the foam because it looks kind of tasty <laughs> right now. It looks, and yeah. It looks like cheese. This is great. And if I look yeah. it up in my fitness pal, it doesn't show up. So that means it has no calories. Fair apparently. Game. So, game. yeah. Yeah. It's, it's all fair. It's all fair. <laughs> so, um, what what uh, you said you can eat? So I'm just curious here. Now Shelby does your diet, so I don't know like how plugged into you are, or how plugged into you uh, are. I'm asking this horribly. How aware are you of what the numbers are on the uh, diet? I'm like aware. macros. He'll give, ma he'll give me macros. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So he's not and writing the diet. He gives you macros, and then you figure it out from there mostly. Yeah, when we first started together, I think he gave me stuff, but then I started to be like, hey, can I do this for this and this for this? And then he just gave me macros, and I'm like, perfect. He's like, stop asking me this yeah, fucking shit. Here's your numbers. <laughs> I, I tend, yeah, I tend to just fall into the same stuff anyway, mm -hmm. right? There's really not much variance. Um, and I find, I that, find that's like, true of pretty much everybody who's successful. Like, you've yeah, got to make it something that's just kind of effortless. That's it. And like, I always think I always get upset when people, you know, bad mouth bad they're like no you just got to be flexible i'm like i am not flexible like <laughs> if i know and especially for someone like myself and probably most females is we probably have ibs so we probably have just like intolerances digestion issues all of it who fucking knows what's going on inside of our bodies you find your golden foods and you roll with them and you stick with it and so you know if that's just iceberg lettuce and ground turkey three times a day then Plus egg whites, yeah. Like, I literally have, like, five things that, like, sit comfortably in me. Especially mm -hmm. when I'm prepping. I find when I'm prepping, prepping, prepping and dieting. <laughs> I'm going to start using that verb. I like it. Prepping. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, there's fewer and fewer things that I can eat. Uh, so, like, even the things that I'm eating sometimes aren't sitting great. So I'm like, oh, God, what am I coming down to? Air? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're down to it. That's it, Shelby. Air it is. <laughs> yeah. Do, do you find, like, um, as you get deeper and deeper into prep, do you start to experience, like, can you feel like your just overall cortisol just from prep is rising and it starts to impact your GI at all? Or does it impact your sleep I don't know if I all? would relate it to my cortisol necessarily, but I definitely know when something is not okay. Mm -hmm. Or, like, something's going to tip it a little bit one way or another, and I have to either, like, pull back a whole meal and just, like, let my stomach settle um, or push through and everyone else is in trouble. Yeah. I, I was um, – I can I can tell it's sleep just because – or it's, it's stress just because I start to, like – I can sleep like a motherfucker. Like I'm a professional yeah. sleeper, but like those last few weeks of prep, it can kind of get to me. And also yeah. like the key for me is like, as soon as I start getting that reflux heartburn, like that's stress for me. Yeah, and that's how that's, I know like, Oh, okay. Apparently I'm stressing out about this show. <laughs> that's a good point. Yeah. I usually get a lot of heartburn towards the end. Um, I'm a terrible sleeper, so I have to oh. knock myself out with several different concoctions every night. So, oh my God. Yeah. And that's, an, like, that's another thing that I, like, will try to work on in my off-season, too, right? Where it's like, okay, well, we'll 
pull back on the sleeping pills. Like maybe just, just kind stick of to, regulating a little bit. Yeah, maybe just stick to CBD, THC, and maybe some valerian root tea. You know, something a little bit more natural rather than all of the over the counter <laughs> stuff. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Cool. How long is a typical prep for you? A long time. I like to take a long one. I don't like to. Yeah. My body doesn't really. Honestly, my body, like I want to say, like twenty weeks. 20 25 okay. weeks like half a year um i, I did 22 this last year which yeah. was longer was than i've ever done body? before yeah did you like uh, the longer ones yeah it's hard for me to say for sure like yeah. um just because there was a whole bunch of shit that went down and at five weeks out I ended up having to start to travel a lot um my mom got sick and yeah. so i was going back and forth to the west coast she ended up dying a day and a half after my show oh, um sorry. so yeah. so it's like the day after my show i had to fly like i'm like okay i've got my post show plan set up and i was like nope you're going to oregon no, for a don't. week and a half yeah and, <laughs> and so that was kind of the start of like everything is now a shit show Derailed. Um, yeah totally so the, like the first 17 weeks i felt like were pretty easy yeah. and then the travel started up and then the stress increased and the last Got 5 harder. weeks were the some of the worst 5 weeks i've ever had to deal with but i don't yeah. think it was because of prep like right. i, I think next time around i'd probably i'd probably try 22 weeks again if the math worked out and yeah. it seemed right like yeah, yeah that's it i just like it cuz i find it takes me a little bit to like i stutter step a little bit um, mm -hmm. I mean, it's hard to all of a sudden flip into, okay, cardio mode. Okay. Like no more, like no more cookies here and there, you know, stuff yeah. like that. And I'm pretty good. And like my boyfriend totally understands. He's like, okay, no peanut butter in the house, no almonds in the house. Like, you know, the stuff that I are my kryptonite, then I just yeah. eradicate. So he's been amazing the things that, that you, way. The things that you can't portion control. Yeah. I literally don't have any sort of control over peanut butter. I don't know what happens. Yeah. It's there and then it's not. When, when you're in prep, are you, like, perfect 100% every day? Is that the expectation? Mm, I'm I'm pretty close. Okay. I would say the one thing I don't do is I, I most – if I – okay, so if say it's, like, six ounces of turkey and I measure and it's, like, seven, I'm like, meh, it's protein. Like, how, could, <laughs> how, bad, how bad could that be? Um, and I probably sometimes towards the end start to overdo vegetables because I'm I'm hungry, right? You want, want so, the volume. Yeah, and so I yeah. think this prep, I'm going to be more mindful of pulling that back, um, just because it's a lot of stress for my digestion to figure out. Yeah. Well, especially depending on what veggies you select. Like some of them are just really rough on stomachs. Yeah. Like they're good for you, but you know, it doesn't mean That's that they're it. easy to process. Yeah, exactly. So uh, for my prep, I usually choose um, just like like lettuce. <laughs> oh wow! <laughs> like, okay. Yeah, like that's, that's boring how, as like, fuck. Boring as fuck. So it's. Yeah, it's just simple and it's just water dense and that's it. Like there's nothing, there's no real roughage to have to worry about. So mm -hmm. I do supplement with fiber outside of my vegetables, but yeah. Yeah. Are you, uh, are you largely like, you know, I hate to use the term carb free, but more or less like as yeah. prep gets deeper and deeper. I'm like everything free. Well, and I, I figure like that's kind of Shelby's MO for a lot of people I know yeah, as well. And honestly, it's just like, oh, carbs? Me. No, we don't do those. Yeah, well, what's that? <laughs> um, I definitely, I prefer it that way. I'm pretty carb sensitive. Like even after eating for a few days, like I'm already up like 15 pounds. Right. Mm -hmm. And a lot of it is just like, just gastric bulk, right? It's just yeah. more food I've been eating it, and water. And, and, and water. Stuff. Water. Cause if, you know, if your carb intake is up, your body water is going to be up exactly. quite a bit too. And so like, I already feel a little more normalized, like today better than yesterday and then better than the day before. So I know like in another week when I check in with Shelby, I won't have such a spike. I told Robin, I was like, I'm up like 15, 17 pounds. She's like, what did you eat? Lead? <laughs> like, it feels like it. <laughs> yeah. That lead diet. That, that's one yeah, fat that's that it. hasn't That'll taken off right yet. Down. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. Um, is there anything that you wanted to cover or mention or any like, you know, animal rescue charities you wanted to advocate for or anything? <laughs> I'm just uh, I'm throwing ideas out. No, all, all of them. them. Yeah. No, I do, do you have any like, do you have any dogs? I do have a dog. He's a rescue. Okay. I meant to ask that before we started because if you said no, I was probably just going to be cancel. like we're 5 minutes in no. and okay, yeah, that's great. Connection's bad. It's all the time yeah. we have for today. Yeah. <laughs> so what is, is your dog grabbable or can we see He's him? At Cliff, come here. Cliff. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. Okay. <laughs> he has no idea. Come here. Come here. Come here. Oh. oh. Yeah, this, is, this is Cliff. 
He looks like a cliff. <laughs> Big red dog, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we got him at end of 21, babe? Yeah, end of 21, so we adopted him right at the end of the year. Nice. Um, yeah, he's from a rescue. He's a few time. He's actually a Louisiana dog. I think he was brought up really? from there. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, so he's a, a Dane, Great Dane, Ty Ridgeback boxer mix. King Corso. King Corso, sorry. King Corso, Ty Ridgeback. Yeah. He's like, I, what, 90 pounds? No, no, no. He's uh, 60 pounds, maybe. Oh, 60. Maybe 65. Okay. Right. Maybe he's eating mom's diet right now. All, all I really saw was the head. He looked like he had a 90 pound yeah, head. He's, he's a little <laughs> bit wild, yeah. Yeah, he's uh, he's eight or nine years old, I think. Yeah, but oh, I've man, adopted dogs awesome. most most of my whole life, so I'm a big advocate. Okay. Yeah. Do you guys? I have figured dogs? you were good people, and now I know. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's two. it. Re- rescues. Yeah. yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah. What kind? Uh, I've got a. They both just went to the vet yesterday, so they were drugged up all day long. Oh, dopey. Um, yeah. So, um, Taz is a red healer, like a cattle dog kind of mix. I had a, I had Um, a mix yet. Yeah. And he's like, he, he might be like 14 or something like that. We didn't know how old he was um, when I got him. Um, and he had high uh, maintenance, like, like a active dog too, right? Does he show his age? Yeah. No, he doesn't at all. I mean, he has glaucoma and so he had to have an eye removed. Um, so now he, now he just looks like a fucking badass, though. Like a pirate. He's, yeah, put he's a like, badge don't on that. don't fight me, or this is gonna happen to you too. <laughs> That's right. And, but with all that, um, all the procedures that he had for that, he became kind of reactive, and so yeah. like strangers can't come up to him now anymore. He's and, like old at and the he vet, can't see, and I'd, I'd be yeah. pissed too. Yeah. Yeah, me too. And then um, we have Derby, who is a beagle Derby. dachshund mix, oh. who is <laughs> like. If you imagine the cutest fucking dog you could imagine, that's like one. that's her, that's and then the you're one. like, well, she's she's got to be sweet too, right? I'm like, you have no idea. No like, idea. she's probably ten times sweeter than you would even think. Like, yeah, just like snuggles all the time. Yeah, yeah. Oh. I mean, she and she just she's very timid. She's kind of scared, and she just wants like she just wants her bed and her blanket, and that's she's it. A- <laughs> <laughs> I can relate. Yeah, <laughs> I know. I'm like, same girl, same. same. I get it. I get it. Oh, that's yeah. awesome. <laughs> um, so you are a, you're also a coach, right? Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. How can people find you? Uh, they can find me on Instagram, on YouTube. Mm, that's pretty much where all my main social platforms are. So it's just okay. my name, IFBB Pro, or Coach Alyssa Coppolino. And I think Alyssa Coppolino, IFBB Pro on YouTube as well. Okay, cool. Yeah. I'll, uh, in the show notes and stuff, I'll put links for sure. all that too. Sure, would love so, that. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Awesome. Any, uh, any last words? No, honestly, like, I love your review videos. I think you're honest and genuine. Well, thank and I even you. like when you kind of like, you know, poke fun at the commentators for their <laughs> stupid ass comments. I love it. <laughs> it was so, so trying I mean, yesterday. all you need to do is just open a freaking book and look at the names, right? Just, just kind of do a little bit of like pregame research. But no, you're totally yeah. right. And I think your opinions are honest and fair. And you're not, you know, picking at anyone and being mean just for, for clout for clout chasing reasons no i love it and i really appreciate it and i hope you keep doing it and your other videos informational are great so keep it up thank you well you haven't heard my rising phoenix commentary yet so i might get a little salty in that (laughs) can't wait there's because like the whole time i was talking with um aj of that female bodybuilding channel on yeah, Instagram. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So mm-hmm. he was sending me like voice notes, like screaming into the phone, and he was like, it's a scandal. <laughs> and so everyone was getting all up in arms about it. And it was like, the one time I don't do a show and they're choosing the smaller, leaner girls, <laughs> like, I just, know, this right? was not my well, year. I'm packing it in. <laughs> I just love that uh, the, the passion is there from people who are who are into it and following yeah. it. Yeah. Like, yeah, that's we super need it. cool. Definitely do. So, yeah. I asked you if you had any famous last words. That does remind me of one last question that I have, and yeah. that is, okay, you are, sadly, you have murdered somebody in cold blood. Mm-hmm. You are in jail. You're you on know. death row. Yeah. I, I, you were in prep. I can <laughs> imagine, right? There's, there's a lot of people that probably deserve to die towards the end of anybody's prep. Just yeah. saying the wrong thing, looking the wrong way. Yep, anyway, you're it. on death row. It's your time. What's your last meal? Oh, a big fat burger and french fries. Hand cut french fries. Okay. All right. Yeah. I'm Going a pretty staple. big food. I'm a I'm a big food snob. Okay. Um I grew up in a family. My dad was a food reviewer, writer, book. We love food. So, <laughs> uh I would be pretty picky with this burger, but it would have to be like a proper like brioche bun, some good, you know, gooey cheeses, couple smash patties, not the thick ones, you mm-hmm. know, caramelized onions and just proper hand-cut french fries. So like a halfway to gourmet burger. 
halfway to gourmet, but like make it in a greasy spoon. Okay. Yeah. But like grass fed beef, like give me the real shit, the good stuff. Yeah, if I if I taste any hint of freezer, you're done for. Double homicide. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, I, I think you're probably in chains on your little release out to this burger oh, okay. place. So, I make it work yeah. just around someone's <laughs> neck. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was uh, tell my my wife has said that I'm a connoisseur of low quality foods. Um, <laughs> I call it white, so, tra white trash taste buds. I have that too. Well, though. Yeah, that's it, absolutely yeah. it. Or like <laughs> yesterday was a day where I I just said like, man, I ate like a fucking raccoon today because um, <laughs> I kind of kind of did. Eat yeah. Trash. Fast. But seriously, like my last meal, I'd be like, "Take me to a fucking convenience store and just let me." <laughs> oh, that good, eh? Like 7 that's all I want to do. Japan, I think, have probably the most epic choices. Although I hear Bucky's uh, is pretty good too. Bucky's is too big. Too um, big. Like too I, big. I don't need a convenience store the size of a Walmart. Right. <laughs> there. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but it's interesting that you know Bucky's from up there. So apparently, I don't. The but reputation. I have, I, eventually, when I get down there, I will visit. I've seen enough YouTube, you know, exploratory. You got to take a picture with the beaver, I guess, or whatever. Uh, I think that's the thing. I don't know. That's the theme. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Well, they've got this like <laughs> giant bronze beaver statue outside of all of their <laughs> stores. All of yeah, them. Which, wow. Yeah, yeah. yeah which I, I'm from Oregon, which is the beaver state. So I'm like, that yeah, is well, appropriation, I'm from Canada, motherfuckers. So <laughs> I see enough there of go. them. We're good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Alyssa, that was awesome. I thank you very much. I'm going to um, say bye to the audience. I'm going to ask you to stick around for one second for a quick debriefing. Um, but thank you very thank much you. for your time. It was really fun. Thank you. Awesome. Okay, that wraps up another episode. And thank you all so much for watching. If you like this episode, please share it on social media and tag me on Instagram. I am at Darren underscore star. Also, please subscribe to the channel here if you haven't already. And feel free to check out any of those other videos that you see here as well. 5starphysique.com has details on everything that I have to offer, including contest prep coaching, body transformation coaching, workout programs, swag, and a whole lot more. Thanks again for listening. And I will catch you all back here next week.